we also said that um, for a function to be well behaved, okay, uh, not only must be, okay, let's go back here. We said psi must be a well behaved function, and one of the conditions for it to be well behaved is for it to be normalizable. In fact, we want it to be normalized. It also must also be single valued, and it must have a it must have a second derivative. Okay, and that condition for the existence of the second derivative derivative has to do with the assumption that we can have to make another assumption that we have to make another postulate that in that psi is obtained by solving what's known as a Schrodinger equation, which is which requires that it has a second. So uh, let's look at the next question right here. Which of the functions here is not well behaved for the interval x equals 0 to x equals 10? So the way to look at that is just plot it. Okay, so from x equals 0 to infinity, what does e to the negative x look? Actually, we want to look at e to the negative x and e to the negative x squared. E to the square because it has to, we have to see if the square of it is has a finite area under the curve. Okay. So e to the negative x when x is zero, e to the zero is one. Okay. And what happens to it? Expect increases. E to the negative x is one over e to the x is known as an exponential decay. One over e to the x. And so it looks like that. Okay. So that approaches zero as x approaches infinity. So it's continuous, okay? And it has um, the second derivative exists. Its first derivative of e to the negative x is one. It's gonna be e to the negative x times negative one. Okay? The second derivative exists, e to the negative e to the negative e derivative of e to the derivative of negative e to the negative x simply just negative e to the negative x e x is equal to e to the negative x so the first first derivative and second derivative exist it's continuous there's no break in the function and if you square it the plot pretty much looks like this it's just very similar, and you're still going to have an area under the curve that's fine. Okay, so this is, this is well behaved, and you should be able to show the same thing for e to the negative x squared. Well, what about this one right here, e to the x? Well, e to the x is going to go up like that. So e to the x approaches infinity as x approaches infinity. So that means the square of that will do the same thing. So this is not quadratically integral. So that function e to the x for the interval zero to x is not well. Okay. Which of these functions is not well behaved for the interval from x equals zero to x equals two pi? That's what does sine x look like from zero to two pi? Okay, so it's continuous. First derivative, second derivative exists. Is it quadratically integrable? Let's plot the sine x. Let's plot sine x squared versus x equal to 2 pi. What do you get? You just get the square of that and the square of that is positive, so you have a finite area under the curve. Okay, so this is well behaved. What about tangent? You have two choices here, so that must be the one that's not well behaved. What does tangent x look like? First, from zero to two pi. Tangent zero is zero. Tangent, if you recall, sine over cosine. So it becomes. Um, from 0 to 2 pi, what does it look like? Sine 0 
when x is 0, sine is 0, so tangent x is 0, what happens? As you go to pi over 2, and 90 degrees, what happens to your tangent function? Cosine becomes 0, right? So pi over 2, this goes to 0, so that approach dividing by zero, you get a very large number, so the function goes up, so it goes to infinity. Okay. Beyond pi over two, over here in the second quadrant, your cosine is negative, your sine is, starts to go back down to zero, right? So it, it goes from negative infinity, okay, and it goes back to zero at pi. So you have a discontinuity here at pi over 2. So your function is not continuous in the interval from 0 to 2 pi. So right there and then you can say that it is not a well-behaved function.